Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough, and we're exploring the wonderful region of the Cotswolds in southwest England. For the last couple of years, we've been following in the footsteps of Herbert Evans, who wrote this wonderful book, Highways and Byways in Oxford and the Cotswolds, in 1905. But we've almost finished his journey now, so we've decided to revisit the centre of the region and find some hidden gems, places that are not quite so famous, but still just as beautiful. Today, Ross Widget and I are to be found a few miles outside the Cotswold proper in my hometown of Bampton. The weather is amazing, spring has well and truly sprung, and we who are lucky enough to live in this extraordinary village are emerging cautiously, blinking into the sunshine. I speak with grateful authority when I say that this village community has been brilliant during this pandemic. The support networks that were set up at the beginning of last year were magnificent and misery and deprivation were kept to an absolute minimum. The village has a fascinating history. It may not be in the Cotswolds, but it has a venerable past. There's been a settlement here since the Bronze Age. It was once so remote that it was called Bampton in the Bush. There was a religious community here around 600 AD, run by a man called Bournewald. It was a collegiate setup, and his church was on the site where you see today's great stone building. He was canonized quite soon after his death, so Bampton has its very own medieval saint. John Blair, the Oxford historian who specialises in this area, says of Bampton Church, Bampton Parish Church seems to have been one of those collegiate churches, lesser than cathedrals but greater than the ordinary run of churches, which were known by the 10th century as the Old Minsters. In the 13th century, it still controlled a huge parish covering nearly half of Bampton Hundred and containing several daughter churches. It had a large rectory manor and it was served by a team of three vicars, perhaps the direct successors of pre-conquest Minster priests whose houses stood around the churchyard. In the late Anglo-Saxon period, this must have been the mother church of the whole low-lying region between the Thames, the Windrush and the Cotswold foothills. Bampton was the administrative centre of the Bampton Hundred, which included many of the villages and towns around. I'm not sure anyone knows the origin of the word hundred in this context, but it certainly meant that Bampton was a place of great importance from a very early age, probably before the Norman Conquest and possibly long before. A market in the 11th century was probably held on the land east of Church View, now several back gardens for the houses around, including mine, and the new triangular marketplace was laid out when a new market was granted by Henry III in the 12th century. In the 21st century, the church has come to the attention of millions of people worldwide as the parish church of Downton Abbey. The church and the buildings around it were used in the making of the television series. Churchgate House, standing, as its name suggests, at the gate of the churchyard, served as the Crawley household. Several of the local cottages became pubs, the post office and villagers' homes, and the square was the Downton Village Green. The old grammar school, Downton's Cottage Hospital, starts its final phase of restoration next month. My amazing team of volunteers in the Bampton Community Archive, of which I'm chairman, 
have raised the enormous sum of around a quarter of a million pounds, thanks in no small part to the help of the Downton fans and the support of the star of the show, Hugh Bonneville. We expect to be finished by the time they arrive. In more violent times, one or possibly two castles were built here. The first by Matilda during the reign of Stephen in about 1142, as part of a chain of defences from Wallingford to Winchcombe, and later by the Earl of Pembroke in 1314. What's left of his castle is now incorporated into a private house, and the current owner has gone to wonderful lengths to restore the moat and all that's left of the medieval structure. Bampton had its brush with the Civil War. In April 1645, Oliver Cromwell beat a bunch of royalist troops in a battle at Bampton in the bush. And that night he is supposed to have slept in the house right next to where I now live, which was, of course, subsequently named Cromwell House. There is some doubt as to where the battle was fought. Cromwell's report states that the royalist troops were holed up in what he called a pretty strong house which could, of course, have been the castle. However, there's no mention in his report of the subsequent destruction of the house, which is what you'd have expected if it had been a substantial fortification. In 1649, soldiers belonging to the radical group known as the Levellers mutinied in Salisbury, about 56 miles south of here. They marched north towards Burford, just a few miles up the road, where they intended to meet up with like-minded friends. Blocked from crossing the River Thames at Newbridge, which had been their intention, they crossed instead at Radcote, just a couple of miles from here, and on May the 15th, 1649, they marched through the streets of Bampton and crossed the plain to Burford. They were shortly followed by Fairfax, a parliamentarian general, and on the following day they were surprised and captured in Burford. Their leaders were executed outside Burford Church, while the rest of them were made to watch from the roof. This was the death knell of the Leveller movement, which subsequently petered out. I hope you've enjoyed our little trip around my hometown of Bampton. Seeing it waking up again after this year of almost complete silence is remarkable, and it's very exciting. We've enjoyed it. And next week, we'll be back with some more hidden gems of this part of the world. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And of course, you can find us on all the other platforms. We'll see you again soon.